Hello everyone, welcome to another Obsidian tutorial. So on the last video we learned about Obsidian's use for writers and now we're going to learn about Obsidian's use for world building. Today we're going to be learning everything about Obsidian, just the basics for a quick tutorial about everything that you can do using Obsidian. And also how can you use Obsidian's core features to create your world building here. Why am I want that? Because Obsidian is a note-taking app that uses Markdown and it's amazing because you can basically organize everything that you want for your world building or your book right here, just unified. I mentioned that I use Obsidian to write because it has a lot of helpful plugins, but today we're going to focus on things that Obsidian already has and how can you start using him to basically create your world for your book or your D&D and etc. Subsidian is a helpful tool to basically unify and compress everything that you need in just one app because it has so many different uses and so many different ways to organize information and this is basically what we'll learn. So here you can see what will we learn. We're going to learn about tags, about the graph view, about attachments, bookmarks, canvas and some plugins. I forgot to add that here. Let's start by just having a quick tutorial about Obsidian's main features, okay? So here on the bottom left, we have options menu. You have general options, you have configurations for the editor, of files and links, appearance where you can change the theme. You have your hotkeys right here. If you want to add some or change some, you can go right here. Here you have the core plugins that Obsidian already has and the ones that are activated and the ones that are not. And you also have the community plugins. And right over here we have the plugins all over again and their configurations. We had a little tour in the options menu in the last video, so if you want to check that out, that would be awesome. Here we have basically a manual. You can visit the official website, you can join the Discord chat or the official forum. We're not going to be doing that today because we are lonely. We don't need friends, right? And we also have the sandbox vault right here. Going up, we have the format converter, basically self-explanatory, so it converts format. And when you activate one of them right here, you just click and start conversion. It's going to change your documents. I'm not going to be doing that. I never use that, um, but yeah. That's what it's for. We have the command palette. It's also, it also involves hot keys and you can add. And if you want to know how to open something, you can just search here. So for example, if I want to do a quick switch, uh, open the quick switcher, I just use Ctrl O. This button right here serves the purpose to insert templates. We don't have a template folder configured. We're also not going to be using that maybe in the future. Right here opens your daily note. It just opens a note with the date and you can use that to just take quick notes. I also don't use that very often. Here we can create a new canvas. We're going to be looking at that more profoundly a little further. This is the graph view and this is the quick switcher that we just used. Right here we have our files, we have our search bar, and we have the bookmarks. Here you can create a new note, a new folder, you can change the sort order, you can auto-review a current file, and you can also collapse or open them all. Here are your tabs, and this is the feature that basically where you can edit the tabs and you can close them, you can stack them, you can bookmark, etc. This opens the right sidebar. You can use this this is just very helpful. You can just open them, for example, and just drag a document and then it will appear here, as you can see. This is the graph view, by the way. Let's get started. What are tags? Tags are tags. I can just add them here. And this is very helpful for you to search for tags or to use the graph view. And this is also helpful for you to search for documents that have the same tags. And if I click on the tag, it opens every node that has the same tag, all right? Why are we going to use this? We're going to use this for the graph view. What are attachments? Well, attachments are links and to open them, you're just going to use pair brackets and connect to a document such as these. And now we are connected and if you click that, you're going to open that note. Bookmarks. Bookmarks are another form of organization as well as the canvas and the graph view but you can basically click right on a note and you can add a bookmark 
for example, this bookmark, I'm going to call it Obsidian, right? When I save this and I go to bookmarks, we have that right here. And we can also organize them by folders or create a new bookmark collapse and open them all. Now let's go to graph view. Graph view is the main focus of this video. So I just created a simple example here for you guys of how you can use the graph view to create your world, all right? And so what do we have here? Well, if I go to the options right here, you can see we have different groups selected. We have the tag world, the tag plugins, and the tag alliance, all right? We are showing the tags and the attachments, and we're not showing the orphans, only the ones that are linked to each other, all right? Let me just unlink this right here because it won't serve us the way I want. Here you can show the arrows, um, where are they coming from. Here you can edit the force. I'm going to basically just give it in 0 0.20 um, because it's easier to visualize. And now let's understand each and every one of those dots. Okay, so what do we have here? So firstly, I created about the world, a note about the world. It says, so my world has blue aliens. <laughs> this is just, because uh, I didn't know what to, what to say right here. Um, this is, would be like a document that describes our world. And I linked it to the hashtag world, right? Now in the graph view, we can see which other notes are basically tied to this tag. So the tag world has about the world and it has also documents that talks about the country one and the country two, all right? Country one has a document that we attached. So the green ones are the tags and the white ones are the notes. We can change the colors of the tags right here. As you can see, you can just add a new group and you can edit the color of the path of the file of the tag of the line, etc. Now, country one has the it's a document talking about its culture, country two also has, and they are both linked to the world. But I also added that country one has an alliance with country three. So I just used the tag to show this and connected them together right here. And this is, would be like a document talking about that alliance. It also has another document that talks about its history. So as you can see, it would just be very interesting to create your world building right here because there's so many different things that you can do. So when you finish this, it would probably look something like that. So I just separated some Reddit posts here so you can visualize how big the graph you can get and how many different styles can it turn into. You can basically create a map as well if you'd like. So Obsidian as a vault to gather information is just amazing because you can create everything, anything that you want here. So many different styles and ways that it can be built, all right? We also have the canvas, all right? So I just created a canvas here just to show you guys also what you can do with it. It's basically a whiteboard. Oh, but Anna, we have that on Canva, we have that on Figma. But I think the main benefit of Zidin is that everything that you need would be in just one software, in one app, right? And so I can create a timeline here, I can create a map, I can create anything. So for example, I just brought one note, I can add a note from the vault, for example, this note right here that we were looking at, and I can connect it to anything that I want. I can edit the color, zoom in, and I can also edit it right here on canvas. We can also add media that is in one note, and we can just add a random card that won't be necessarily tied creating another note. And so yeah, I just think that this is just so amazing. And I think it's a feature that not many people know about. We can have the graph view and we can have the canvas together to create our world. And bookmarks are also helpful in that sense because you can organize the notes however you want them to and not necessarily how they are appearing in the files. Now let's just take a look at some helpful plugins that I think could be cool for you to use. So if you go here to community plugins and you go to browse, we're going to be looking at the timeline 
plugin to basically build a timeline. So if I were to add a node that talks about the history of the certain country of my that exists in my world, I could add this feature right here to create a timeline there. And we have many different ones, but yeah, this is just the one that I installed, for example. We also have image caption. Um, if you want to add an image and add a caption there to create um, a character profile or to use a map, you can also use it. And there's also the mind map, where you can create your own mind map in a diagram form. So this was everything for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new. And I'll see you guys in the next one.